Now, when you go in the New Testament, and matter of fact, I'll go there first. It speaks on the Lord being having a marriage. All right. Yahweh Shai. This marriage is a spiritual marriage, right? Because um the ones that he's marrying, all right, is his uh, one third, you know, which is the the men and the woman. But um his uh top choice picks will be the hundred and forty four thousand. You know, now what goes into it in Revelation is the seventh chapter, you know, about his uh the the the, the hundred and forty four thousand. But the uh the rest of the one third, you know, people uh take out of context that he'll grab uh pretty much all nations, you know, because it says out of every nation and every kindred, so to speak, in Revelations, right? Another part of Revelation, I believe that's the fifth chapter. But um, you know, I'm gonna get in going to the story of Genesis because if you don't know, Isaac Yahweh Shai, all right, in his other lifetime was Isaac. All right, and you understand that by reading Galatians. You also understand that with Matthews, okay? He's at he's Isaac. But um, this is Matthews 22, and I'm gonna just get straight to the point. Um, it says verse eight. It says, "Then say he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage." All right, so. What is he telling them is to prepare, okay, these individuals for the marriage, all right? And then you have uh, the brides, which uh, I think Paul also spoke on that, you know, I want to pr pr uh, bring you forth as a chaste version. Let me see if I can find that. I want to basically, Paul said, I want to present you as a uh, chase. There you go. Uh, first, Second Corinthians 11 and 2. For I am jealous over you with a God of jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Yahweh Shah. This is not talking about um, actual females. Well, it can apply to the uh, sisters as well, but it is simply talking about the most high is a hundred is a um his his one third you know and we always speak about the elect because really that's the first the first uh, focus all right and which are what the tabernacle of the lord is men so he's saying i espouse you to one husband meaning that we're going to serve the most high with our inner our spirit we're gonna that this is you know though we labor in this world Though we buy things or you get caught up in the flesh at times, at the end of the day, we're looking forward to uh, we're worshiping, we're serving one husband. All right. And we're constantly putting off from old ways and the old man. All right. And the, the serving our ourselves or our belly. Right. It said that I may present you as a chaste version to Yahweh Shai. So. He's going to present us as a chaste version to Yahweh Shai. Now, I just want to go into Genesis because Isaac, okay, received uh, Rebecca, right? And she was a virgin, all right, who have a young virgin as a young woman. And then as it says, she have dealt with no man. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm actually going into that is because Abraham said with strict orders I do not want him to deal with any Canaanite woman. I want him to be of my, pretty much of my family lineage. So this servant had to go search the same way we're going out to search. All right. And this servant also had to look for certain qualities. He had to put it out there like, Lord, I want her to be like this. I want her to, uh, I'll go into it. You know, uh, one of, uh, uh, if I ask for a drink of water, she give me drink. And then when she, when she see that I got the camp, my camels with me, she also say, you know what, I'm gonna give you a camels drink, you know? So like he already put out there how this woman would be, you know, with these criterias. And when you really look at the story, he was going out here, you know, for what I, I, I Abraham ordered, but really to bring this this woman to, to Isaac. All right. And that whole chapter, Genesis, the 24th chapter is about that. But 
what also lodges in my mind is that this world, at a lot of times, I'll go to the book of Tobit. You know, the scriptures is demanding that we marry in our respective tribes. Now, why would the Lord tell us to marry in our respective tribes? Why would that be a push? And then the Most High is just going to marry people outside of the respective tribes. Now, don't get it confused because we are all in a Gentile state of mind. So though some of us may live in other lands, have a different language, may even look different in the physical flesh, that does not mean that the Lord is marrying outside of his tribes. That just means that he's marrying individuals that wouldn't be typically identified or they're living in a land that they're not technically from. All right. But they are still within the tribes. You see what I'm saying? This is a uh, Tobit chapter four. Verse um, 13. I'll start from uh, 12. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. So this was another situation with Tobit told his son Tobias, right, to chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. Why would this be a push? And take not a strange woman to wife. All right. Now, what does that mean by a strange woman? That means an actual female that was not part of that Hebrew Israelite lineage. All right. Now, we know a lot of us are scattered abroad. We grow, we grew, um, you know, through before, even before transatlantic slavery, because we went into many captivities. So we learned a lot of different customs, you know, and some of us, some of us, are, you know, still caught up in those customs. And then a lot of us is repenting and coming back. But the main focus was to not take of a strange woman. So if the Lord is putting this big push, then that means the most high, that would be a, hip, a hypocrisy for the Lord to just take anybody. You see? It says, which is not of thy father's tribe. So what tribe was Tobit from? He was from Nephtali. He's from Nephtali. When you read about, uh, read the book of Tobit. So now, now, you know, they focus, it didn't, now you can still deal with a, uh, uh, from another tribe, but it's just showing you why Yahweh Shai focuses on in Revelation 7 chapter, the 12 tribes. And it says that till we have sealed the servants of our living God on the forehead. Those are those same versions that are getting married unto the Lord. It says, for we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all marry wives of their own kindred. So why? Did, why all of a sudden, you know. When we get into the stories now that the Lord is just going to take him brides of all different people. That makes no sense. Oh, he's just going to marry the whole world. That makes no sense. That makes no sense because these other women will not believe. All right. And what I mean by that is these other nationalities, these other nations, they won't believe. They will not. They won't be able to uh, be married unto the Lord. All right. Then they haven't they they're not um from that native um they're not of that same kindred. All right. It says of their own kindred and were blessed, and their children and their seed shall inherit the land. And that's another main reason why, too. Because if you if you marry a woman from another tribe, now I mean not even another even from another tribe. Let me even say, let me just start with that part. That um they can they'll inherit parts of the land all right and that's where uh you know um you know you could lose out on your inheritance because um say this man marries a woman in manasseh now he can he can um and i, I correct me if i'm wrong he can now own parts of the inheritance of the uh, uh, uh of these lands right and um that you know that was a big thing because you know, certain tribes are supposed to have certain lands. Now, how much more a heathen marrying a woman and now having ownership to part of a land in Judah somewhere, you know, or the female or or female wives. Now, you're con you can have concubines, but not as a wife where, the, where she has inheritance of that land. 
you know and like uh yeah how we should i told a woman at the well like this is this is not your well you know <laughs> you know because it's it wasn't and that's a pure example of it she thought that was her well right saying her father think no you you are a heathen all right it's your husband all right but it's not it doesn't belong to you okay um now therefore my 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 son I love thy brethren despise not thy heart thy brethren the sons and daughters of thy people and not taking a wife of them so that's pretty much the the main thing that would be despising the people if the most high was to take on the heathen he would be despising and looking down on Israel you know and Israel is the apple of his eye it never said that anybody else is the apple of his eye if you say if something's the apple of your eye you're not going to go and take anything, man. All right. You, it has your eye. All right. Um, I don't need to even get go to that scripture. But what I do want to look at is this story right here. It was a powerful story. I was reading with the brother and, you know, it's pretty long, but I'm going to pick out some points in it. All right. And the points I'll get is. In Genesis, and I'll go to Genesis 24 and 7. It says, um, I'll soften it. Let me soften it. Genesis 24 and 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh had blessed Abram in all things. And Abram said unto his eldest servant, of his house that ruled over all that he had put i pray thee thy hand under, under my thigh now this is an ancient custom of pretty much you know making a promise an oath and i will make thee swear by the lord the lord god of heaven yahweh shai and the god of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the canaanites among whom i dwell now once again his son is Isaac. So we're dealing with Yahweh Shai, right? <laughs> if you can receive that. Why all of a sudden now Yahweh Shai receive everybody? Canaanites, is it? Now, you will have in the scriptures, woman from Samaria, this, that, and the third, this person from here, you know, and you may say, well, Alchemist says this person is from Canaan. Well, that's because they're living in Canaan. But they are Israelite living in Canaan. But this right here is literally talking to about straight up Canaanites. All right. And Abraham said, yo, I don't want him married to them. Now, why you think that? Because they're not of his tribe. And it's going to say it. Verse four. But thou shalt go into my country, into my kindred and take a wife unto my son, Isaac. And so I'm going to jump down, right? I want to jump down because this is, this is a good story to read. So this servant went on his mission, right? And... Let me go to 14. And, and it let it come to pass that, verse 13, Behold, I stand here by the well of water. So he traveled to the city, right? I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass. He's putting this out there. He's praying in the Most High. He's asking the Lord, Let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I say, Let down that pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. She shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camel drink also. Let the same be seen. That thou has appointed for thy servant Isaac. So he put it out there. So pretty much, what was the characteristics of her? She would be actually caring. You know? She would actually be caring. Because she would what? She wouldn't be stuck up. She wouldn't look down on this man. She would actually be helpful. 
because this man said this man said what um I, I need drink right and so she was gonna get drink for him and for his camels right it says let the same be she that has appointed for thy servant isaac it says and thereby shall i know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold rebecca came out before Slakia uh, came out who was born to bethuel so before he even finished speaking he's he's praying like in his mind to himself right you know, um, not to himself. He's praying to the Most High, but he's, in, you know, inside the door in his closet because he's saying this in his mind, in his heart. It says, um, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with 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 her pitcher upon her shoulder, verse sixteen, and a damsel was very fair to look upon in a virgin. Neither had man known her. All right. So what was she? She was a very fair, and she was a virgin. And man had not known her. So what? Once again, that was that 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 ver that chaste virgin who was espoused to one husband. All right. It says and filled her pitcher and came up and the servant ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, drink, my Lord. And she hasted to let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink. She said, I will draw water for thy camel. So she was pretty much a person, once again, that was very thoughtful because she seen that he had camels. And this is what he put out there, right? She seen he had camels, right? And then she did that. So this is where you get the 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 of the elect where the Lord said, um, you know, if you, you know, you can't you visit me in in in, 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 a, in a prisons you have fed me you have clothed me you know um you know go with that brother twain if the brother acts you know go with him you know if he asks you to go uh basically like go a mile you go with him two miles right see this is the type of mindset all right where you know they were putting he put this he put her to the test he put her to the test he put this out there but then, you know, he tested it. Hey, you know, I'm thirsty. And then, you know, she went, boom, let down her pitcher, got him water and then looked for the camel. So he was he was going to peep all of that. If she didn't meet that standard, if she would have just gave him drink and not considered for the camels, he'd have been like, you know, nah, she not the one. You know, she 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 did cool, but she ain't her mind ain't really there. I want to see someone who's going to be able to tap in and really, you know, look around and see what's what's needed. All right. And you got great brothers in the truth that will do that, you know. They'll see this missing and, you know, brother buy a sackcloth garment. You know, let me do this. Other brothers, you know, every brother's got their own talent. You know, that's not to uh, compare it to and say, um, you know, because um, everybody that do. But you got brothers that look around and they'll add. And that's what that's how you should be should be should be doing. All right. You should be adding. You should be, uh, you know, being proactive. She was proactive. OK. And she didn't get burnt out with it either. You know, oh, damn, man, this is old nigga. You know, shit, ask me something to do. You know, get his old ass out of here. You know, I'm young, fine. You know, because <laughs> she was fine, right? It says that she was a very fair damsel. That that means that she was beautiful. Like, like she was, she stuck, she stuck out. All right, that's, you know, like a uh, young Aaliyah or something like that. I, I mean, I can't compare. All these ones I'm going to mention is going to downgrade. But, you know, very fair to look upon is very beautiful. All right. And she ain't no man. So, you know, she was very humble as well. All right. So he knew that was the one. Right. And guess what? The same ones they marrying is, is the one like that. But once again, the point of this is just to show you that what um, the most I still have uh, um, sending forth, you know, those those out there to look for his men, look for his um, look for his uh, his woman. And they're going to be from what? From his tribes. And they're going to be he's not just taking anybody. That's another thing, you know, let's, let's, re, you know, he just, he's came, yeah, he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. No, not for everybody, for, for particular people. Why would all of a sudden that change? All right. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the lord had made his journey prosperous or not so he thought about it yo wow man I, I think this is it and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of a half shekel weight and two bracelets 
for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in our father's house for us to lodge in? Now, why would he do that? He's doing a background check. He wants to know what stock and what lineage she come from now. All right. And once again, these are the things that the angels are going to do. So there's no way in the world where the Lord is just marrying and taking on anybody. You know, that's what this world does. But even when they, this world, all right, they want uh, they want you to think like that. But no, they don't even take on and, 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 and uh, let everybody in their, their, their society. Esau, my, Esau, Esau still got closed doors in, in his shit, right? So, come on, man. You think the Lord is going to pick everybody? He's going to let the Rothschilds in if they repent? You know, oh, man, sorry we, we did this to the world, you know, in Jesus' name. You know, and then boom, you know, he, he just repent. And now we know his name's not Jesus, but I'm just using that as a pure example of what, you know, Christians Christians say. You know, he could just he could just stop right now at the last minute and just say that. And he's good. That's bullshit, man. That'll be unfair. Right. And the most I ain't taking a dirty old ass, man. Anyway, it says uh, and, and said, whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in our father's house? Verse 24. And she said unto him, I came. I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. Verse 25, and she, she said, moreover unto him, we have both straw, provender, enough, and room to lodge. And so she was also had a lot of hospitality. All right. Now, these are different quality of um, versions that that's going to move like this. You have brothers in the truth that move like this. Very hos hospitable. Let you win, feed you, you know, let you chill, relax. You know, this is the type of... Uh, um, you know, uh, sister, she was as well. All right. And, um, it says in verse 26, and the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. Now, why do you think he did that? Cause he like, wow, this, this is, this is of the most high. This is of the most high. I found the wife for, uh, for, um, for Salaki Isaac through the spirit and power. Yeah. How about shot? Right. But once again, he didn't just go choosing every anybody. So why would the Lord all do all of this? And then all of a sudden, when the Lord come on the scene again, he's just going to choose everybody. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. And you might say, oh, this is Genesis. Well, we could go into many different scriptures. We could even go into in, a, in the New Testament. How the most I say, he said, I, I, I want to, Paul said, I want to present you as a espouse, a chaste version unto one husband. You know what it means to be chaste, all right? <laughs> you know, do you, do you know do you know all this whole process? Well, in order to know it, you got to look at the Old Testament. You got to see how they were doing this. On um, verse twenty-eight, and the damsel ran. Um, verse twenty-seven, like, and he said, "Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who have, who have not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way." The Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, led me to the house of my master's brethren. Verse 28, right, because it wasn't no GPS or cell phones or shit like that. You know, it, he had to go all the way to Mesopotamia. All right. So, you know, this was the most high doing that. You know, it's like if you find finding a brother in the truth, that's that's not easy. Or, or finding not find or finding a uh, a uh, a uh, um um a potential um version that's not easy all right that's not easy verse 29 and rebecca had a brother and his name was laban and laban ran out unto the man unto the well verse 30 and it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hand hands and when he heard the words of rebecca his sister saying thus spake the man unto me that he came unto the man and behold he stood by the camels and at the well so she told him the story and he said, come in thou, blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and a room for the camels. And the man came in the house and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the man's feet um, that were with him. So this is all, this is the whole process, right? Of showing how he background checked the family, how he even tested the family to see, you know, 
how far they will go or how hospital will go so you know you know because one brother did a video you know like it, you know that that that's that those tests are always going around you know saying that this brother's gonna be good you know because it, it, you gotta see the lawyer wants to know you know he, he wants these why would he change this style of, of picking picking wives this is this is this is this is this is how you would put them to the test now yeah she could have been like hell no i don't know you and you know no i'm not you're not coming in i don't have enough and this that, and the third but that's not that wasn't the case they made room. They got. It, they found it. They washed his feet. They did. They did all of this. They went above and beyond. You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna get. You ain't gonna get that from, from nobody out here. You know, only very select few. You know, because the love of many out here shall wax cold. You know, first, and then everybody's you know self-centered. You know, once they think that once 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 you ask them, they feel like you know you're you're taking away from what they have to give to themselves or, or to their family, which. Of course, we don't have as much as 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 was back then, but at the same time, you know, um, you know, these, these are the ways that you would test someone even until this day. It says, um, and there was set meat before him. So, um, he told her the story, and she actually came back and married, um, married um Isaac. All right. Verse uh, 67, Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca and she became his wife. What we, how do you think he became his wife in his mother's tent? What did they got Esau to do a marriage ceremony and put a ring on her finger inside his mother's tent? No, he did what anybody bringing a female to their tent would do. He had sex with her. He lay with her and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. All right. His mother Sarah, you know, he was comforted after her death. So this is the whole process. So. The reason for me is just another angle or bringing this out, just another angle to show that this was a process. This whole chapter was just a whole process of Abraham, of Isaac, finding one wife. Now, Yahweh Shah is coming for 144,000, right? You know, of his uh, tabernacle being with men. Why would it just be everybody, the one third? Why would it just be everybody? All right, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense knowing how the lord um put the spirit on him to diligently go through this so this is just another um aspect of uh looking at uh you know the things that went into and how it was such a stress that it be um from your from their tribes you know from 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 their tribe or from from our lineage you know so um you know lord's will this was edifying um i did have a few other precepts that had crossed my mind i didn't go into them but uh, you know what? This I'll just keep this short and to the point. You know, um, you know, if you haven't hey, check out reading that Genesis the twenty fourth chapter, it's a beautiful read. And so the next time I'll say Shalom. Call all y'all by